you're working on a project about giants, angels, all that stuff. And we're coming into what I believe are the days of Noah. And you, you have a really great, I should say, just vantage point because of where you live and how you're viewing the world. So are, are you finding churches that you're speaking at all over? Are they gravitating towards that message? Is it impacting people? They're either gravitating to, toward it or they're afraid of it. Oh, okay. Because uh, honestly, there's a lot of sensational stuff out there. Yeah. And people, people who are mature, they don't like to go to sensational stuff. It's true. But honestly, Joseph, the stuff that was happening before the days of the flood, yeah, it really is being replicated and it's going to be replicated more as we come to the end of the age. Yes. And you know very well, we've talked about it, Yeah, that I went to the ruins of Noah's Ark. Yes. And they're not on Mount Ararat. No, they're, they're the no. lower mountains of Ararat. Yes. And I'm going to take you there. I can't wait. I am, you know, I kind of liken you to Indiana Jones a little bit because you, you teach, you, you instruct, and then you go to these exotic, amazing places. It's because of where I live. It's amazing what you, you do. When you live in Moscow, you're just a couple hours from everywhere in that part of the world. It, the the trip to Noah's Ark when we're talking about that that's that's going to be kind of a rough and tumble trip right like it's well you know I mean I've been on a real rough and tumble trip. I know you it's just when you get there it's very rugged but you know when I tell most people I went to Noah's Ark they say yeah we went to Kentucky and we saw that <laughs> replica too I'm not talking about I've never been to the one we're not Kentucky. going to Kentucky but Joseph when you go with me you're going to be amazed because it is so massive exactly the dimensions given in the Bible. Wow. But when you walk on top of it, you got you kind of look around and think, where, where am I? What, what is this? And you can see the ridge of it all the way around, you know, big hump in the middle, which was probably the atrium of the ship. The atrium. You can literally walk right up to the very bow of the ship. I can't it wait. It just sticks right up out of the ground. I can't wait. Oh, Rick, we're going to have fun. But the things that were happening before the flood, Jesus said will be replicated at the end of the age. Yes. And before the flood, beginning in the days of Jared, the watchers begin to come down. Yes. And the watchers were angels. Yeah. That God in his kindness assigned to help man in his fallen state. Now think about it. Angels are only male. So in heaven, they had never been around females. Right. But when they begin to watch over mankind and they saw women... That was something they'd never seen before, and they became obsessed with them. And we have a record. This is they came down, 200 of them, and they begin to mate with women. The women produced giants or Nephilim. That is fascinating, though, when you say angels are only male and they'd never seen women. That, you know, that, that makes you really pause and think, well, of course, they saw something that absolutely altered their point of view. And, and is that the tradition about angels and women? Yes. Angels looking at women is so strong. That when you come to First Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says women are to be veiled because of the angels. That's right. So the memory of that event had never gone away. My goodness. It really took place. And if you don't have that context, looking at that scripture, I've always wondered, what does that mean? Like, for the sake of the angels, you know, have your covering. That's fascinating. It gives you insight into the culture and what they really knew about history. And before the flood, of course, these women were mating with angels. I know it raises a lot of theological questions, it, uh, but they really were. Yeah. And, you know, somebody says, no, 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 they can't be because the Bible says everything produces after its own kind. Yeah. Well, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. But we know that today from genetic engineering, you can produce all kinds of things that are not after their own kind. That's right. You can break the laws. Yes. And those angels violated the law of God and they produced monstrous beasts. They did. And now here we are. Living in a day when there's transgenderism, that's not normal. Now there's transhumanism, right? You can be anything you want to be. Anything you want to be. And we know that they are messing around with genetic engineering, mixing, especially humans and pigs. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. I just wrote about it in my new book. They're mixing humans and pigs to grow new organs and to see what kind of a new species they can produce. Pigs. Of all that's, that's a violation of law. That's not after its own kind. That's right. And so these things really happened and they are happening. Uh, it, it's fascinating when you, you consider the whole concept. You know, what you're teaching on, I believe, is a prophetic lens for what's going on in the scripture. I believe it's no mistake that you are really bringing Noah's Ark to a whole new audience. 
You're bringing it to light. You know, you're bringing so many things forward. And I believe it's because it's a prophetic mandate. Well, that's how I feel about you. Well, thank you, sir. You know, I love to watch you. I try to watch you every day. I don't always get to, but I try same. And when you go to the whiteboard and you start putting stuff on the whiteboard, I always say, Denise, how does he do that? Because it's so fresh. And honestly, Joseph, it's so accurate. Thank you, sir. And I really appreciate the insights which you're bringing forward to the body of Christ. And because of the medium that you use, which you have a massive audience, you're reaching a brand new group of people. Wow. And Joseph, you're reaching a lot of older people. Wow. You are. Wow, Rick. People are really tuning in. Wow. And thank you for sticking with the Word of God. Well, thank you, sir. I, I believe that you and I have a prophetic assignment. I think we do. I believe the Lord really put us together. I do, too. To, to, to really walk out a generational calling. And I'm just so grateful. You know, I've followed you for so many years and, and just watching your ministry, gleaning from your ministry. And when the Lord began to align me to you, to be with you, I'll tell you, I feel like we're going to really help a lot of people by the grace of God. Because it's about, the Lord gave me this word about the powerful twos. He bring twos together. And that people would begin to get breakthroughs because of the right alignments. I think if you find your tribe, you find your calling. And Rick, you're my tribe. <laughs> so I'm grateful for your fathering, your strength, your leadership. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an interesting culture we're in right now. And I believe God is raising up the answer. And the answer is the ecclesia. And that's why I'm so grateful. What is ecclesia? Well, the ecclesia is the called out ones. And uh, I remember one day I used the word ecclesia because you hear that in different circles. And Rick was very gracious to me. And he said, it's actually the word ecclesia. You got to understand the word. It's from ek, ek, which means out. It's where you get the word exit. Uh huh. And the word kaleo, which means to call. Okay. So it's those that are called ek, they're called out to make an exit. Okay. And that word ecclesia, it really is not a Bible word. It originated in the city of Athens. And it was the group who ran the affairs of the city. Wow. And they were called out. They were elected. It's, it all has to do with election, predestination. And they came together 42 times a year, nearly once a week. Really? There was an orator who spoke at every meeting. They began with worship. It's, it's just such a picture of the church. Now, that has to play into your teaching on the apostle, too, because then the apostle being the admiral, right? Or right. And so how does that play with the ecclesia, or does that have a good tie-in where the apostle? Well, the, I mean, the apostle established churches yes. in new territory. Yes. But the ecclesia, what's important to understand is it was the dominating force in a city. That's amazing. It made the decisions. It made the policies. It decided who was included and who was excommunicated. And so when the apostle Paul began to describe the church, he borrowed from that to really say the church is to be the dominant force in every city. Amazing. We're, we're not just a little church on the corner. We are to be God's prophetic voice. Come on. In every city and every nation. That's who we are. That's who we are. Well, Rick, and that's why we're holding back evil. We're holding back evil. We are. Restraining. Like we're a restraining, restraining order against that's right. evil. That's right. Rick, you know, we're, we're at NRB right now. Yes, we are. And you haven't been here for many years. And I've not been here since 2004. 2004. You know what I'm taken back by is how many people recognize you and come up and they've read Sparkling Gems or they've read one of your books and people just say, I've listened to you for years and they're really honored to meet you. It's fun for me to watch them. We're having a lot of fun. We were on the airplane coming here yesterday. Yeah. And the couple in front of us, I don't want to call their names, but they're quite well known. They're, and he turned around and he said, is your name Renner? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's my name. That's me. A Sparkling Gems Renner? I said, Sparkling Gems, Renner. <laughs> and it's so fun to meet people. It is. Isn't it an honor? It's an honor. That people know us. That anybody would come listen. It's really an honor. They don't it's have to listen to us or read what we write. It's an honor. And Joseph, thank you for what you've been writing. Oh, man. You know, I want to tell your viewers, anybody listening, Joseph has a new book coming out called Demystifying the Prophetic. Oh, Rick. I have read every word of that book. It is amazing. And when that book gets out, you get it because it's going to set a new standard about prophetic ministry. Thank you, sir. And thank you for the intense work you put into that uh, to look after me. I'm so grateful for that. And thank you for reading it and helping me edit it, Rick. I'm so honored. Thank well, you, I'm sir. proud of that book. It's going to be good. Thank you, sir. Well, Rick, it's been great having you today. And I know it was you.
There's a lot of people that are going to want to see you, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to be with me today. Thank you. I'm glad to be with you, Mr. Z. Well, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it and I hope you become a part of our partner family today. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God. And I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you to a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com. I wanna say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply wanna say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it. And I hope you become a part of our partner family today.